My name is Ipek Özkaya, and I'm going to be presenting our vision in next generation automated software evolution, which we're calling refactoring at scale. Lack of targeted design automation hinders software evolution. Redesigning and re-engineering existing software gets very resource intensive very quickly, and such re-engineering and redesigning tasks are not uncommon for industry software. A modest application with only 68,000 lines of code contains more than 10,000 nodes as well as 50,000 relationships. For a simple evolution task, a developer needs to understand what nodes to change as well as what relationships to resolve, and this gets very resource intensive without automated tool support as well as error prone. There is existing tool support for refactoring, even if limited. There is a floss refactoring and root canal for a refactoring. Floss refactoring refers to continually tweaking a code base. Root canal refactoring refers to improving unhealthy code with infrequent but focused fixes. While we have some automated support, these, this support is typically integrated into the existing IDEs. They're developer driven, which means the developer needs to decide where to make the change and select from a given set of uh, refactorings. What we're calling refactoring at scale provides a third category where the developer triggers the change. However, they're not necessarily in charge of it all. The tool provides full automated support by rec uh, recommending different alternative changes along with different refactoring operations. And more importantly, takes advantage of current advances in search-based search techniques. If we step back and to look at some of the tools of the trade, we see that visualization and analysis actually is not uncommon in software engineering tool support. There are commercial tools that provide some limited assistance to assess the current state of software. Most of these tools are categorized as tools to assist understanding refactoring opportunities. For example, there are dependency analysis matrices that help you to understand where the software might be tightly coupled or graph structures that again, help you to understand why the software might be coupled. While these tools are very helpful in navigating and browsing the software, they typically treat the software uh, code as a, a homogeneous without providing support in terms of where you might actually focus your refactoring efforts. They typically focus on improving a quality metric rather than focusing on the call, again, such as isolating core for deploying as a service. There are refactoring assistant tools as well. For example, a lot of IDs incorporate a subset of followers refactorings, for example, Eclipse. But as I said earlier, these kinds of refactorings tend to focus on more floss or root canal refactorings. There are research tools such as JDODERN that uh, those of you who are in this uh, research area might be familiar with that do provide refactoring assisting along with improving code. For example, JDODERN helps to uh, resolve feature envy or code clones with refactoring support. While these tools have their places, they tend to treat a software uh, goal as re improving the quality rather than evolution. While one might argue that is a kind of evolution as well, it necessarily does not address, for example, if I need to upgrade to a new technology, what are the areas of the software that I need to change and how can I refactor the software for that specific goal? The gap that we identify and that we lay the vision for, we're referring to as refactoring at scale. This is goal driven, where the goal is uh, often to improve, is more often to uh, meet a business goal rather than simply improve software quality. For example, harvesting software involves moving a feature from one context to another, reusing a capability, factoring about out common capabilities that shared assets, decomposing a monolith into modular code, or isolating a feature to enable continuization, or replacing, such as uh, uh, providing better options from other suppliers, or removing proprietary license code. These examples are not uncommon in an industry, especially when there is new technology. These kinds of evolutions are actually part of the uh, tasks of software developers and often get ignored because of lack of effective tool support or become very timely and error prone. If we look at the challenges for achieving refactoring at scale, there are actually a number of research opportunities that uh, provide both a way forward as well as interesting research problems. For example, how do we characterize the project specific goals? The goal in understanding refactoring at scale needs to start with the business as well as the developer. And the implications are developers and the goal driven workflows should be implemented in our next generation tools. 
What part of such refactoring process should be automated is also not a trivial problem. Automation should move from, in, should start with uh, addressing the uh, common and known problems such as what are the dependencies and, and identifying the dependencies and presenting those to the uh, developer, but move beyond uh, uh, to from the tedious repetitive tasks to more complex ones such as how do I uh, refactor a database schema or start features. And uh, a big uh, aspect of whether these kinds of refactoring tools are acceptable or not, as earlier work in, uh, has identified, is whether these tools are acceptable to developers. Developers will need to adapt to these new workflows, as well as will, be, will need to be given confidence that the tools actually provide the solutions that will help their goal. Developers also will need to adapt to design decision making with prayer to optimal solution space where the trade-offs take priority rather than getting to one uh, close to complete solution. A key underlying problem in this is what kind of a representation enables successful refactoring at scale. We need to be able to collect information from different sources and generate extensible representations to enable that information to be housed uh, with, uh, um, so that we can support both dependency resolution, database schema resolution, as well as dynamic dependencies that we can capture and resolve uh, in the uh, process of evolution. And most importantly, the developer workflows will change. We're more used to these iterative, local and smaller scale interactive developers, especially driven by the IDEs. These kinds of next generation tools will be more decision assistance where you can actually provide the goal at hand. Maybe the tool runs and provides you a general slew of solutions and the developers select from those uh, slews of solutions. And it will shift the time spent from design in the design from problem discovery to routine solution generation and uh, implementing those uh, solutions as well as testing them after those uh, selections have been made. So if I step back and demonstrate what is feasible today, I'm going to uh, give a teaser of some of the work that we're conducting at the Software Engineering Institute's Architecture Design Analysis and Automation uh, Group. We're adapting search-based optimization algorithms to recommend refactorings that can isolate software towards this harvesting or replacing capabilities. The input to our algorithms are a project specific goal. For example, I would like to isolate this capability as a microservice and obviously the source code. The source search-based algorithm runs uh, on the code and uh, with, the guidance, uh, with the scope of the project specific goal and comes up with uh, refactoring recommendations. The underlying uh, approach uh, relies on a graph representation where we extract the nodes and the relationships that we can uh, exercise some of the fitness functions on. We formalize refactorings, mostly the ones uh, from uh, Fowler's, but uh, we go through different variations of these. For example, Moon method has several variations that you need to take into account from a simple uh, minimal viable move to a very complex one where you need to resolve uh, multiple aspects of the semantics. And uh, the fitness functions, it might change from an evolution or uh, replacing this capability might say, well, I would like to optimize the uh, code that changes, or I would like to optimize to run minimum unit tests, or I would like to make sure that I resolve all the dependencies. Depending on the goals and the fitness function, uh, the search algorithm provides different uh, solutions. The goal to uh, achieve the uh, success, uh, or uh, let me rephrase. In able to achieve success, we need to reframe the evolution problem. We're more used to analyzing software, looking at all the dependencies or all the quality issues that might be wrong and suggesting fixes. However, when we reframe the problem, we're focusing on only those dependencies that are relevant to the goal and that are interfere with the goal and resolving those. That actually helps us more achieve 80-20, as well as achieving uh, success in the automation. It scales the problem down, as well as it uh, helps developers to focus on what they would like to achieve, rather than being overwhelmed with the maintainability problem of evolution. If I look, if I demonstrate the flow, we start with the complex uh, software. The example on the uh, very left, the blue blob, is actually an actual software example with over a million source lines of code. 
By looking into the actual relevant software evolution task, we look into where we need to do the uh, evolution. So it's only the portion of the software that is relevant. So by generating the problematic couplings by relationship type, we have we start with in this particular scenario about 2040 problematic couplings, but we reduce them to only a, a couple a dozen that are relevant to achieving the goal. By using the multi-objective genetic algorithm, NSGA2, we generate a set of priority optimal solutions where the developers might actually look where their solutions might rest. And based on these solutions, select and implement a solution that suits their recommendation, which is a list of uh, refactorings that they can actually follow. And these refactorings can be scripted to help with automated evolution in the long run. The refactoring recommendations create a sequence of refactorings that provide clear directions for the developer. Independently reviewable, especially when we look into the acceptance of the developers in terms of implementing these changes. And they are built on refactorings that are already supported in the development environment. So their actual implementation in code become more trivial as well as provide future potential to automate application of the refactorings to code. Here's an example of our work in progress. And uh, the developers we talked to actually resonate a lot with these kinds of tools because they can see if I want to achieve a reduction of the uh, problematic uh, couplings from at the very high end to the lower end, I need to only execute these uh, handful number of refactorings. Hence my task becomes less overwhelming and more manageable and controlled as opposed to being overwhelmed with the all kinds of uh, nodes and elements that I need to touch. Looking ahead, the vision we lay forward is towards next generation automation for software evolution. We would like to develop automation that organizations can trust to provide accurate information for the kind of size, consequence, and resources needed for software changes. More importantly, we would like that automation to be focused on the particular task at hand, which often is more capability functionality driven rather than quality and maintainability driven. And in addition, we would like to advance the state of the art to allow developers to sketch proposed changes, be able to at ease select between different alternatives and move the automation problem to more of a design discovery rather than more of a mundane task that reduces uh, quality fixes. If I demonstrate this on this little uh, graph that we have, software typically evolves. You know, there's an ideal design that you start with as requirements changes occur and different environments come in, the ideal design uh, evolves. But as software evolves through different bug fixes, new technology, functionality, and staff changes, there's a gap that opens. These kinds of next generation tools can help close this gap in a more controlled way and uh, by providing the trade of analysis as a tool along with refactoring support. With that, uh, myself as well as my co-authors are happy to take any questions. 